I'm now going to create the other morph targets for the face. These will be created just using simple modeling techniques, so it will be a bit easier. But before I do, another useful tip, I'm going to create uh, a kind of skull object based on this so that I know that when I'm, for example, raising the eyebrows up, that I'm not indenting into the hard parts of the head. So to do this, I'm just going to select some strategic edge loops around the character. We're typically talking about uh, the mask region, the bridge of the nose, the cheekbones, uh, and the chin and the jaw. Uh, so I'm just selecting these using whatever technique you're happy with. So select, say, a selection like that. Then I'm going to detach them as a clone. I shall call them V-Face Ref Skull. I will take this and I'm going to use the push modifier. Let me just make it a different colour so it's easier to see. So take this and just use a push modifier to push it into the head uh, about 3 or 4 millimetres. So minus 0.3 for example. And now you see, with, combined with the teeth and the eyes, that's going to give us a reference of kind of no-go areas. Skin can't go inside that. All right. We're not going to use conform or anything clever, it's just there as a reference for us. Now when we want to create a morph target, basically, just as we did with the skin one, we're going to take a copy of our reference skull, the whole lot. And that way, when we've got a copy of, of everything, we can work on it here. As we model, it means that obviously we can avoid the skull areas and so on. Now the area I'm going to look at first is the eyelid. Now the eyelid is going to need four different morph targets. The upper eyelid needs to come down to close the eye. It also needs to go up into the eye socket or surprise. The lower eyelid needs to go down into the eye socket and it needs to come up. It doesn't normally go up but of course when you've got the evil stare or your eyeball is looking up you need it to go up and it needs to go up about halfway. So I'm going to create those morph targets for you now. I'm not going to go straight into high speed mode because again I'm going to show you a little tip uh, that hopefully will be quite useful for you. So first things first, select the polygons that run around the edge of the eyelid. and I'm just going to deselect the bottom ones because I only want to work with the top at the moment. Now I want to get a nice kind of curve shape but I want it the other way up that way and the easiest way to achieve that is actually to use the scale tool so if you go up to the scale tool make sure that you're on non-uniform scale which is the middle one definitely don't be on the bottom one I don't know why they even put that in there uh, and then right click on it and then you've got the different values here and under Y type in minus 100 you see you can't actually do a scale of minus 100 using the gizmo but this gives you a curve going the other way now it's pretty horrible at the moment, but the point is it's the easiest way to make it go the other way uh, without too much hassle. You're then going to probably tone it down a bit using the gizmo, like so. Move it down a bit. You can use the scale gizmo quite a lot to sort of flatten or increase the curvature of the eyelid. And uh, also increasing the curvature vertically like so and this needs to come down to a completely closed position like so um, all right yes we can see the eyeball breaking through but that's actually not prime concern at the moment you may be surprised uh, and then I need to also cover the tear duct here so that edge there just move that down a little bit to cover that and uh, we've now got the eye closed now obviously the eye doesn't close in a straight line like that. The edge around the top here also fits in. And the easiest way to approach doing that edge is just to select it uh, and initially at least use the relax tool. So if I just click relax here, uh, then I can change a number of iterations until it comes down to a sensible kind of level. I'm not doing any relaxing on the bottom half. I don't want to change the bottom eyelid at all. It's all got to be the top eyelid. Uh, when I'm happy with that, just OK. And then use the scale tool again, just to increase the curvature very slightly of that. Uh, and move it out a little bit. Just to give it that kind of slightly more 
natural look and I might just increase decrease the curvature that way and bring it down a bit as well okay and there we have one eye closed it's also a good idea when you're creating these morph targets just to look at them with a turbo smooth on because that's how you will see them uh, make sure you have the same settings so if you've used smoothing groups make sure you carry on using smoothing groups and get a feel for what it's going to look like when the eye is actually closed and well it'll do make sure you delete that afterwards because obviously that's going to stop it working as a morph target so that's eye closed so now I'm going to rename that one as eye right top closed and now I'm just going to go into high speed mode while I create the other three morph targets for the eyes you can choose to watch or not I'll put a fade to black at the end so you know where to skip over till Rather than boring you with all the morph targets and making you watch me model them all, I thought I'd just talk you through the rest of them. So the eyelids that we've just uh, seen, top eyelid closed, top eyelid wide open, bottom eyelid closed up to halfway, bottom eyelid wide open. Okay, they're easy enough. So let's just uh, look at the other ones in turn. And uh, you watch me model those, but these ones you didn't. So what I've done is I've actually put them together animated so you can see how they move. So let's look at the brow first. The brow is going to move up and down above each eye and up and down in the middle. So if we look at this one first, this is the brow moving down. So you can see there the edges that I've used to fold up and down. Because this eye moving down has an effect up close to the middle, what I've done is the verts in the middle here, down through this line here, after I've made the eyebrows work, I've moved these down to a kind of halfway position. And that way when both eyebrows come down, they'll move down the whole amount and it will look like one continuous line. So if you're doing any morph targets like this, which go as far as the symmetry line on the face, Ignore the symmetry line initially, and when you've got this looking how you want, just make sure the symmetry line is halfway between both sides, like so. I've then got the eyebrow raising, and the same rule applies here on the symmetry. And then I've got two separate ones for the movement of the centre of the brow. If I slide it down, I've got one where the brow goes in and down, and one where the brow goes in and up. Okay, because whenever you move the, the centre of the brow, it furrows. So in both cases, I've actually taken some polys in the middle here, and I've scaled them down with a bit of soft selection on, and moved them exactly the same on this one here. Lips. Now there's two sets of lip movements. This set of lip movements here relates to the corners of the mouth. So let's just have a look at each one of these in turn. The corner of the mouth needs to be able to widen and it needs to be able to narrow and you can see the narrowing one here. And again this is just achieved with a little bit of soft selection. So if I just show you uh, these edges here with a bit of soft selection on to go through and affect most of the lip. And pretty much the same with this one here. Uh, just pulling them in using a bit of soft selection. Now these other two here look a little bit unusual. They're to do with the mouth turning up and down. Now it's not natural for them to move like that, but this one here is fully horizontal movement, so the mouth gets wider. And this one here is fully vertical movement, so the corner of the mouth goes up and rotates a little bit. These morph targets are designed to be used in concert together, so I'll have a controller on the edge of the mouth which will widen it and move the corners up and down and narrow it depending on which way you go. So I can move it out and up and it will add that morph target to that morph target so the mouth will get wider when the corners turn up and uh, down is the same as well. So let's just have a quick look at what I've selected on there. This is very simple, I've just selected the corner of the mouth there 
and you can see I've lifted it up and rotated it slightly uh, and done the same with the other one over here. Looking at the other lip selection here, these are all symmetrical lip movements. So I've got the top lip opening and the bottom lip opening. Again, they look pretty unnatural on their own, but when they're used with other movements, they will look a lot more natural. And then over here, the opposite of that is going to be the top lip narrowing and the bottom lip narrowing. Cheek and nose movements. Well, the cheek movements are fairly essential for smiling and stuff like that. The nose movements are a little bit optional. So look at this side of the cheek here. It's basically the cheek moving up. Uh, it's more important to bias the cheek towards the outside and move it in along these lines. Uh, and if I just highlight the edges used there, you can see quite clearly how they move. Notice I've also put in a little indentation there. It's quite a good idea there, and also with the brow, to put in a few edges that just go in and out a little bit to give you uh, a hint of wrinkle. So if I just show you that without anything on, you can see it gives you a little crease just up in the eye there. And then the three nose ones are less essential. So I've got a nose wrinkle over here, which goes up like that. I've got nose widen, okay, and nose narrow, okay. And in both cases, you have to account for the nose changing shape a little bit. So notice as it widens, it also goes in a bit, and as it narrows, it also turns over on the edge a little bit there. And then finally, because she's got big ears, I've also given her some ear morph targets as well. So if you just look at them, I've basically got one where the ear moves in, out, up and down, and you can see them like so. And I can uh, use them to add to the expressive features of her face, uh, and uh, I don't know, don't know what yet, we'll find out when I animate her. So they're the facial ones, I've also put in some eye morphs. Obviously this is on the uh, un-turbo smooth eye, which is why it's got a very octagonal shape, but pupil dilation and constriction and also because she's a vampire one that make her eyes go a little bit reptilian and because she's also a vampire I've got elongating teeth so you can set up all sorts of fun things that you like I've given you a flavor here of the kind of uh, facial movements that would be useful in creating a facial rig I'll let you decide on your own Right, I'd like to talk you through mirroring the morph targets now. And to show you where the problem is, I've got a morph target here where the right eyelid is closed. I'm just going to add that into the morpher here. So pick an empty morph slot, pick that object from the scene, and let's animate it up and down. And you can see her eye opens and closes. Marvellous. Now, if I was to just mirror this morph target across to the other side, look what happens when I animate this. You would think, wouldn't you, perhaps that it would mirror onto the other eye, but it's not. It's still the right eye that closes. And the reason for that is because all the morpher is doing is remembering movements and position changes for each vertex based on its vertex ID. And mirroring it across like this doesn't actually have the effect of uh, changing the vertex ID at all. So let me just clear that one out. I'm going to show you now how to get around this problem. So put it back to its original side. Now we need to create an animated version of this. So I'm just going to take my reference head, I'm just going to make a copy of that here. Uh, and on the reference head I'm going to put a morpher. And I'm going to pick the blinking eye from the morpher so I've got an animated version of the head. Then I'm going to mirror the animated version across so that it blinks on the other side. Now in order to transfer that information onto a new morph target, let's just get this back to the unanimated position. Then I'm going to skin wrap another face to it uh, and animate it so that the skin wrapped face now has a, a blink on the other side. So I'll take another copy of the reference face here and align it exactly onto my animated one pivot to pivot XYZ. Just zoom right in on that so we can see it a bit clear. Add a skin wrap to that new one uh, and where it says add pick the one with the morph target on. Okay. Change the mode to face deformation 
Then go back to your morph target one and animate it. And the skin wrapped one will also animate. So then you can go back to the skin wrapped one, collapse the stack, and you'll now have one with the left eye closed. Delete the morpher one now because you've finished with that one. So now if I apply this to a morph target, so I'll put them both on. Uh, let's put in that one. And let's rename this one just uh, Okay, so I've got right top closed and left top closed. If I now move in here, right eye, left eye. I should have both eyes closed and go to sleep.